Okay, love it. We are recording now. Oh, we have a picture? Yeah, we picture. Still have, we still have three minutes. Also, do you want me off camera? I don't no, have to be part no, of the camera. Right. Okay, okay. Do it, Renee, do it. Okay. Yay. Yay. So We're hand. not being paid for this book tour. <laughs> You'll be our promoter. Love it. Our roadie, yes. Yes. We pay Starbucks. We pay in Starbucks and hugs. <laughs> okay, is that good? Can you see it? It's yes. super good. Yes. My yes. mic better? Yes. Uh, you can be, you can add a little more light too. I think yours is like me, lights behind and I don't know. It was I weird. don't have any more light. So yeah. this is what we get. Are your blinds open? <laughs> Everything's open. How's my lighting? You're, you yeah, it's a little brighter. You can adjust it manually in Zoom, you know. Really? You know that? Did you know that? No. You I go to video settings. Well. You go to video settings on your camera. And then it'll say adjust for low light. And you click it. Do you see it? You're gonna have to show us how to do that. Okay. 16 people in the waiting room. I think Woo! Do you want me to show you or not? No. We're going. <laughs> Yeah, just go to a uh, video set. You go to your video camera, you click on the arrow and go to video settings. And then you click on video and it says adjust for low light and you can actually slide it. Do you see it, Marie? I, I'm on video settings and then I went to video. And, and then under my video, it says mirror, touch up, adjust, oh, for, adjust, low light. Okay, adjust, adjust for low, low light. light. And, then, and then do manual and yep. then, okay. Is that better? Oh, oh yeah, much better. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Now you really look indigenous. We, su no, I'm just we support each other with um, everything, small <laughs> things and large things, matters of the heart and mind and lighting. Oh, well, I didn't find it, but okay. <laughs> well, you have good lighting. So okay, let them in. It's one minute. You want to put some music or something? Um, sure. Alexa, place. Spotify and I'll put it on um let's put it on Gypsy Kings. Here's oh, okay. All right. Wrong song, wrong one. 459. Should we let them in? Yeah, let them in. Yep. Okay, we're letting them in now, right? Okay. Yep. Yes. Here we go. I sent a reminder so you're going to see the number change a little bit probably. Have fun. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. We're still letting a few people in. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Let me just Hello. pop music. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So Hello. We we wanted to welcome everyone to our Latina Leadership Tribe presentation. And the reason we chose the name Latina Leadership Tribe is because the origin of our tribe began with a book called A Tribe Called Bliss. And so we're going to share our tribe's journey in hopes that you too can create spiritually rooted friendships that provide the support that you need to reach your highest potential in teaching, in life, and just finding joy and bliss. So um, we really hope that this helps you embark on your teaching career in a positive, successful way. You can go to the next slide. So our journey began in November of 2019. And in this crazy world of technology and being stressed with social media and now the pandemic, 
it's so easy to feel isolated and disconnected, even when you're surrounded by lots of people. So I myself have many friends, high school friends and different friends through um, work and um, different hobbies, but I did feel like I needed to find um, deeper and more meaningful connections in my work life. I was an assistant principal at the time and still am. And I wanted a sisterhood of educators that I could grow with. And so I found this book, I read several books every month, and I found this book called A Tribe Called Bliss. And so this book is a step-by-step -step guide to finding a lifetime of connection, sisterhood, and support. And I know that might sound cheesy, but we truly have found so much bliss in this journey. And um, building a community of intentional peers in education can lead to your personal and professional success in the field of education and beyond because so much of the work that we do has to be collaborative and you really have to have a strong support system. So the first step that I had to do was identify three women who would be willing to take this journey with me and three women who would break free of limiting beliefs, self-sabotaging behaviors and negative self-talk while finding bliss, joy and um, growing with their tribe. And so it really takes a lot of reflection on who you think might take the journey because you have to send them a formal invite to join your tribe, which might sound strange to people. So um, I really thought about it and I wanted to um, choose strong women who might be open to the invitation, creating um, a, tri a, a leadership tribe or a, a friendship tribe and not thinking I'm crazy and so I wanted to choose three women in education at different levels because we would all grow each other and build on each other's ideas. So um, the max for your tribe is four and the minimum is three. If you only have two people, then you really aren't um, getting different perspectives. So the first person I chose was a teacher at the school where I was an assistant principal. So that's Merle Sony. And I chose her because she was an instructional leader at the site level. We had worked together on the EL Collaborative supporting our English learners and just listening to her was music to my ears. So I knew we had common interests and our entire staff saw her as a role model and a leader. And so we had connected on a deeper level than just assistant principal and her energy is so zen and calming and mine is more like energetic. And so I thought she would make a great member of the tribe. And then the next person was Jackie who is principal at Newhall Elementary School. And we had roomed with each other in the summer of 2018 in Washington DC. And she had such a positive energy and um, I asked her about herself and she said that she had recently walked on coals in a Tony Robbins event. And I had just finished reading one of his books. So boom, I knew I loved her. She was definitely um, the type of person that I could be lifelong friends with. So um, I chose her, I'm sorry, I'm letting someone into the room. And then um, there's someone else in there. So um, the next person was Vivian Fish. She did not work in our district but she did, she had previously worked in our district at the same ele um, elementary school, McGrath Elementary that I had worked at. And we both shared the same mentor as our principal who helped us become servant leaders. And we also really worked in very challenging conditions. And so we would call each other to share stories and offer each other compassion during challenging times because believe me, future teachers, education can be challenging and you need someone to listen to you and say, I feel you, I've been through the same struggle. And so I needed her and she was there during that time. Oh, this gets me emotional. Anyway, so, um, and we're all Latina. It just happened to be that way. And we're all bilingual. We all speak English and Spanish. And, but your tribe doesn't have to be all Latina or all bilingual or even all the, the same gender, sex or anything. It's people you connect with that will help you grow as a person. So welcome to Teach for LA. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. I'm Jackie Tapia. As Diane mentioned, a principal at Newhall Elementary. So a big, big hug and all my love to all of the future teachers, all of the educators. Uh, welcome and thank you for spending your evening with us. Um, 
I want to talk a little bit about why I said yes to joining the Latina Leadership Tribe. Uh, a little bit of my background story. I grew up in Guadalajara, Mexico, and I did all of my school there, high school and college. And if you know it, that's when you make your, your, your longest and your best and your, more, your deepest uh, friendships. So all of my high school and college friends stayed behind when I decided to move to California about 20 years ago. So in teaching, I taught elementary and I met some great people. And then I did my different programs and I met other people, but I didn't really make deep, long lasting uh, connections. I was, I was craving for that. So um, when uh, Diane invited me to be part of a tribe, I'm like, a tribe? What? What is it? And then the thing is, she wouldn't say who the other members were. She just said, show up at this time to this date. This is the location and join us. And you know what? I decided I wanted. I wanted um, connection. I wanted to uh, feel uh, supported by other women. And I really just needed a place where I could talk, where I could share. And, um, and I knew that they were all educators. So I knew that we had the same passions, that uh, we were looking for the same thing. We might uh, have same uh, shared purposes. So I was very excited to join. Um, and um, what the tribe does for me today is a group that keeps me focused. It's a group that um, respects and honors who I, who I am and uh, why I'm an educator. So I invite all of you to, to find that group of people that, um, that really support you because that's what leadership really is. Leadership is being able to find your own talents, your purpose and share it with the world, but also being able to find um, or help others find their talents. And you can, this could, these could be your students, these could be your colleagues, and also help them identify what their purpose is. And I know that we are all um, craving and wanting to uh, be seen and have meaning and find meaning to our lives. So that's what the tribe does for me. Um, so thank you for the invitation, Diane, and, and that's why we're here. So um, I'll go next. My name is Vivian Fiss, and I'm currently a principal at North Lake Hills Elementary School. And um, I was super reluctant when Diane gave me the invitation and I'm just being honest. Um, I have always been super private and very selective um, and just very, um, it, it's always been very hard for me to share, especially uh, personal details about myself. So I probably gave Diane the hardest time <laughs> about who's in it and why are we here? And, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, um, it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. And it truly speaks to the trust we had for Diane and the love that she was putting out to us, the invitation that she was giving to us. Um, so although I was reluctant at first, now I crave and look forward to every single one of our meetings. And I'm actually like the official scheduler. I'm always like, okay, when's the next one? Uh, because it truly is filling a need in my, in not only professionally, but personally. I love the structure of the meetings. Um, we make sure to give everyone an equal opportunity to share and to contribute. Our time is very valuable, as you can imagine. We are all administrators. Um, you know, we have uh, very demanding jobs, but this time is precious. And so we make sure to respect the time and honor the time. We laugh together, uh, we cry sometimes, but the most important thing is that we grow together. And we're still on this journey. Um, I personally have developed skills um, like forgiveness, and having more productive relationships with the people I interact with. Um, and I'm continuing to grow and to learn, which in turn makes me a better principal, a better friend, and just a better person. And uh, I think, you know, at the end of the day, we all just want to be happy. And this is definitely um, a perfect invitation, a perfect journey to help you get there. Merle, did you want to go next? 
Yes, I'll go next. My name is Merle Sony, and I am the newest administrator of the group. Um, as uh, Diane Diamond mentioned, when I met her, uh, she was my assistant principal. And when she invited me to be part of this group, I immediately said yes for several reasons. First of all, I um, she was she was a leader in my school, and I I admired her her work right away. And second. I do a really good, I have to say, I do a good job of staying balanced and always striving to grow as a person because I know I work with people, little people, little humans. And um, I always try to be the best me because I know that that's the only way to give out the best, to feel your best. And so when just joining this group was just a way for me to um, being a veteran teacher, learn from, from other leaders and continue my work in self-growth professionally and personally. Thank you. You're muted, Diane. Got it. Thank you, sorry. So for our first meeting, um, people who are courageous enough to create a tribe, especially if you're a future teacher, you're going to be in situations where it's a little challenging and you have to be vulnerable. But um, some of the questions that were difficult for uh, me to answer was, if you really knew me, you would know that. Or where did you struggle? Where do you struggle the most right now? And so you share some very intimate details, but at the end of the, you know, and then you have a certain amount of time to speak. We'll get into that later. But at the end, you can ask for feedback or not. And so in listening to everyone's responses, we realized at that point that we had much more in common than we had even known. And so um, at the end of the meeting, it was like, wow, this is going to be something special. So you heard about the meeting, the meeting, the meeting. Well, what do, does the meeting look like? And um, one of the things I love about our meetings is that I can truly be myself. So if we start a conversation in English and then mid-sentence change to Spanish, in our case, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we bring our beautiful self to the meeting. Uh, we do the reading. And then we are open to have a conversation and then have also sometimes um, difficult conversations or courageous conversations because uh, that's where the learning happens. We are all a work in progress and we all love learning so much. I mean, we never left the school, right? We're still here. So we are always open for um, suggestions and feedbacks. But here's where um, I, we wanna share just the nuts and bolts. Everything that we're sharing comes from the book, The Tribe Called Bliss. So you'll find a very structured, detailed uh, instructions if you ever have a chance to uh, purchase the book. But what I can share is that we meet uh, almost uh, every two weeks, sometimes three weeks, depending on our schedule. It's after work. We've done everything from uh, meeting at a restaurant that we love. We love to do that. But we've also been to each other's houses. We all live in the same area that allows for that. During the pandemic, we did Zoom. But it's always the consistency of meeting every two or three weeks, depending on what works. Some tribes, and it's suggested, they meet every week. For us, that was a little too much. So two weeks, three weeks works for us. During the meeting, uh, it is important that you decide who's going to have what role. And the two that I think we're more consistent with is um, somebody that sets the intention for our, for our meeting with a gratitude and another person that keeps time. It is very important, as Vivian mentioned, that we have equal opportunity to share and we always have one of us that is the more talkative or one of us that has a little bit more to share that day, but we want everyone to have their time. And here are the last two things. Um, I'm always the one uh, doing the questions because it's important that you don't stay at the surface level with the books that you choose. And we'll talk a little bit more about what kinds of books we read together. It's important that we go deeper. So it is very important that when somebody is open for feedback and you state that at the beginning of your uh, sharing, if you want feedback or not, that we really press on each other. 
And we really ask questions that will make the other person reflect or maybe see it from a different perspective or just maybe go a little bit deeper into what they're sharing. Um, that's, I think, everything about the nuts and bolts that we wanted to share. It's the four of us. Uh, it's always um, a very private. Uh, we try to find a place where we can have an area that's just us. When we're doing it at our homes, uh, our families are very respectful and they give us our space. But it's always, always a treat. Uh, I know that, for example, I can tell you that Vivian is super generous and detailed. And every time we go to her home, it's like a party. I know that Merle has an area on her backyard that we love. Um, and then Diane and I are always looking, oh, let's go to this place or let's try this one. It's been a while since we've been there. So it's always um, trying to make it fun, but also keeping the purpose of why we're doing it. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, growth is a big part of why I embarked in this journey. I really just think that I firmly believe that personal and professional growth will really lead you and guide you and, and place it, the opportunities are endless. And so when Diane invited me to be part of this group, I knew that this would just be another opportunity for me to grow pro professionally and personally. As a teacher, as an 18 year seasoned teacher, I had met a lot of my goals and I was ready to take the next step. But I love working with children. I, I never felt that, that burnout feeling. I always just made sure that my students were challenged and engaged, but I needed that extra little push. And I knew that by surrounding myself with lifelong learners, with other educators and, and strong women who were just amazing leaders and role models to not only me, but to, to our district and our students and families and all stakeholders. Um, I, I knew this was a great opportunity for me. So I started the group as a teacher and um, Diane began pushing me and putting me in, my, in a discomfort zone. And uh, once I joined the group, I just, I went for it. So I, I really just, I recommend all of you to just always find your group and, and always strive to, to just, you know, for that self growth, personal growth, professional growth to, to work on you, you know, to work on time management and goals and um, physical fitness and um, your health. And, and, I, and I don't mean just physical health, but mental and emotional. And I think being with this group it just really brings everything together for me. Um, so it was really, it's just been a blessing. Um, I also, I have to say that grit is a, a character trait that I, I really um, just value and, and that, I, that I know has helped me come this far. Um, my, just to give you a little background about me, I come from immigrant parents and my, I was the first person in my family to go to college. And my father did a great job raising me. He met his goals in this country, but his education was third grade. He went to third grade. The rest was self-taught. My mother didn't go, you know, much more than that, but they instilled in me that grit, that perseverance, that don't give up and you can do whatever you want to do. So I always surround myself with with beautiful people, educated people, beautiful from the heart and mind and soul. And I recommend you to find your group and enjoy the journey. Thank you. I wanted to share um, that one of the themes we continuously talk about in our different books is gratitude. And um, there is a tremendous amount of gratitude through service. And I wanted to make that connection today because teaching is a daily opportunity to make a difference in a child's life. And I just wanna congratulate you all for being here today. Uh, whether you are just starting out or you're exploring this field or you're ready to take the next step, um, you know, clearly there is something, a fire in you that 
is you know encouraging you and motivating you to make a difference. So we want, definitely want to support all of you in that journey. Um, our lives are filled with joy in knowing that we're making a difference in the lives of children. You know, oftentimes uh, people will say, oh, you were such a great teacher. Why did you become an assistant principal? Or why did you become a principal? And, you know, the truth is that it's a personal journey for everyone in the classroom. We get to make an impact every year on those 30 or, you know, 32 little lives. As an assistant principal, that perspective grows as a principal. Now I'm making decisions that affect the lives of over 530 students. So um, it's definitely a personal journey for everyone, but it's very rewarding. And for me, it's about sharing my story with families, as many families as possible. I've been very fortunate to have the opportunity to work with thousands of bilingual families from all walks of life. And my story is just like their story, probably just like your story. Um, my parents were immigrants. They came from Guatemala looking for a better future, a better life. My mom was a housekeeper. Um, my father worked as a machinist and they didn't speak English, but that was okay. Um, we didn't have a lot of money. We lived in a one bedroom apartment, but that was okay. And what I instill in my families and students is that no matter what language you speak or how much money you have or don't have, um, you can still make a difference in your future. And in this career, we have the possibility to pay that forward. And so I just wanna encourage you all, um, certainly commend you all for being here. Um, teaching is not an easy career. Uh, this year was exceptional. Um, but with the support of a tribe, you can find joy in connecting with families and making a real difference. Um, you know, the brain research tells us, and this is something else we learned in our books, is that when we're grateful, um, our brains release dopamine, you know, and that is what makes us happy and helps us continue to pay it forward. So our hope is that teaching will bring you joy and that you will also be able to help other families. So we have um, a slide with some of our favorite books. Uh, we started with A Tribe Called Bliss, um, which is the book we were just talking about. And then um, some of the other books we've read are Think Like a Monk, which is one of my favorites, um, The Happiness Track, which is uh, very much um, brain research and data-driven, Green Lights, uh, Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> that was going to be funny, but I'll stop. Go for it. <laughs> all right, all right. And then uh, right now we're reading um, the 5 a.m. club. So, um, you know, we have different settings, but we try to maintain consistency and structures in our meetings. I personally love data. So the happiness track really spoke to me, but I love the pro practical application of Think Like a Monk. So if you're interested in starting a tribe, we would strongly encourage you to start with a tribe called Bliss. And we promise you they are not paying us. We're not, um, you know, in being endorsed or, or we're not endorsing the book or anything like that, but we truly do believe in the work that we've done through this book. And then um, in the next slide, we just have a few pictures of our journey. Um, we've been to a, a different restaurants, different homes, uh, AXA conferences, um, you know, just, different ways to celebrate and uh, support each other. So we encourage you all to find your tribe. We love them hard. So at this time, we would like to open the conversation for any questions you might have. And if not, we can continue to talk about different topics, but we wanted to make a pause and see if you have any questions um, for us. I did want to add that um, a lot of our tribe's journey is on Instagram. We haven't really officially created one, but um, you can go on Latina Bliss Tribe, and we're happy to provide you with support. Um, Jackie, you didn't mention that sometimes you have to keep us on track because... Oh, that is true. Let me share that. Because it's like squirrels. <laughs> you know what? One of the things that might get in the way is that you become really good friends. 
And what good friends want to do is just have a conversation about what's happening in their life and the ins and outs. But it is very important that you stay focused. And I also, the other thing that I didn't mention is the length. We meet for about 90 minutes. Uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, 90 minutes is the average. And we need to uh, respect that time. So sometimes uh, during the meeting, if uh, somebody will go off topic or, and it's very important that you have that person that is willing to take that risk and bring everyone back and refocus. I think the book calls it the, the leader or the tribe leader or something like that. But um, regardless of the name, it's just a, a person that is willing to remind everyone. Then the other example that we wanted to give is uh, sometimes life gets busy. So we try to schedule our next meeting at the end of, let's say today we would schedule for two weeks from now, we decide what chapters to read. Uh, but then life happens. And um, sometimes we need to reschedule. We had a situation where one person rescheduled and then we scheduled for a new date and then that date changed. And when I was reading the, the, the comments, the, 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 the messages, it was like, okay, my husband wants to do this and this person, and then I, I, you, there's where you need to be courageous. And when I reminded everyone, okay, so what is our why? Do we wanna do this? And if we do, then let's respect a commitment that we've made. I've cleared my schedule for that evening because this is truly important for me. Is it truly important for you? And we have that conversation of um, sometimes things will get a little loose. And you need to remember that the structure is what really keeps the work growing and yourself growing. Um, you need to make sure that you read uh, the chapters. Uh, sometimes I came in with, oh, I didn't read the assignment correctly and I didn't read the last chapter. And that affects everyone in your, in your tribe, in your group. So uh, it is very important that we keep that in mind that you have a commitment, that it's a time that is scheduled and you need to honor each member of your group, uh, each member of your tribe and become prepared. No distractions, phones are off and it's just you and whoever is part of your group for that time. And it's such a great experience that we truly invite everyone to create your tribe, whatever that looks like, whatever name you wanna call it, it happens to be that the four of us are administrators. Um, we love leadership as explained before in its different forms. And, uh, but yours can look different and it should look different. Uh, and, um, and that's one of the things that we celebrate as well. Ms. I wanted to add that during our meetings, um, how often do you get someone's undivided attention? I mean, our phones are down. And when they're not, we remind people. And um, you know, we we used to always be checking our eye watches and different things, but we we truly actively and compassionately listen to what the the reading, how it spoke to the person and how they related to it and what it brought up for them. And then we are active listening, taking notes, and then asking questions and really helping the person stretch and grow. But so many times when, when you're out to lunch or out to dinner, you see people on their cell phones and you see the technology getting in the way. And I think if you're gonna do this tribe, you need to do it right where for five minutes or whatever time that you, that's on the clock for each person's um, time to share, um, then you listen to them actively. And the great thing is that you might have an outgoing person in your tribe and a really shy person. Well, with the system that Jackie mentioned, Every person has the same amount of time to share and get feedback. And so we have equal voices. So we're amplifying everybody's voice, regardless of your role. I know Merle did start as a teacher, mm -hmm. but we, compact, we are compassionate and loving and supportive of one another, regardless of your role. So it would be great if you can have a tribe that includes a teacher, maybe a coach or an administrator or something, or even people who aren't in the business who can stretch you, but you have to be committed to meeting once to, we do every twice a month and we have stuck to that. We met during COVID, we make time because it's important to us. It's in, 
important to our growth as leaders and as instructional leaders and educators, because if you grow personally, then you have more to give to those you work with. So um, when choosing people in your tribe, choose carefully. And then when you meet, go over the norms and commitments. And as Jackie said, she does have to remind us sometimes of um, stay on task and not go, don't go over too much because if you keep it to the 90 minutes, you can definitely make time to meet with people 90 minutes twice a month. Um, of course, we go over sometimes now, but we were really strict in the beginning. We started very, very um, like following every single rule, but then we became super close. It's almost been two years. So, um, but I feel like I've known these people my entire life and I've had friends since um, elementary, middle school, high school that you don't get as deep with as you do with your tribe, especially following a tribe called Bliss and then using that same pattern with every single book. Um, it's been amazing. And so we just want you to, we're gonna include you in, in a conversation now. I want you to think about um, your journey as an educator and growing and then also you know, being compassionate with yourself. Um, I want you to put in the chat a few names of, or, or just ideas of people, you don't have to put the name down. You know, I want you to just think about who you would invite to your tribe and why. So if you could add that, and then if you have any questions. Um, we do have a question. Um, someone asked, um, she was concerned that her pronunciation worries her a lot. And um, she was complimentary of our pronunciation. She said she's an ESL student. And she said, what do you recommend me uh, what do you recommend that I do to improve that? I can, I can, if you're talking about, I'll, I'll go ahead. I can speak to that. So as I mentioned, uh, I grew up in Mexico. Y yo, mi primer idioma es el español. Y si hablo en español, voy a hablar así, super fluido y bonito, y les puedo decir muchas cosas lindas. But um, I came here 20 years ago and started learning English. So for me, what really helped was, uh, and I'm gonna be very honest, is watching movies with subtitles and uh, doing that. That was one of the things, I love movies, so I just kind of embedded that. And, but the other thing, you know what it is, it's just embrace who you are. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, 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 having an accent is a sign of courage. Mm -hmm. It means that you speak another language and it means that you are brave enough to express yourself in a new language. And you will be growing your, your um, repertoire of words that belong to your uh, area. For example, I'm, I was a teacher. So I started learning about PLC and uh, IEPs and words that I didn't even know existed. But then I started adding to my vocabulary. And you know what? I made mistakes. Even as a principal, I use our PA system. And sometimes I say one thing and I meant another. And you know what? I embrace the mistake because it teaches our students that it's okay. How many students do we have in our classroom that are afraid to raise their hand because they don't want to say the wrong words or they don't have the words? So uh, it's just a sign for everyone else around you to know that it's okay, that we're all learning and growing and, um, and that it is possible. If you're an inspiration for somebody else that might just be holding on because they really, really want to say something, but they just don't have the courage right at that moment, you will inspire someone. So you'll get better, of course, because with time, we all know that we tell our students all the time, right? Let's practice. Let's find different ways. You know what I use as well as a pronunciation on Google, how to pronounce whatever word. And I practice with that word. Like one of the words that is like vulnerable, that is such a difficult word for me to say. For and all of us. Avoided when I'm trying to speak and I'm like, what other word can I use? I'm like, well, there is no other word that means the same. So I have to say it and I just push myself. So um, just uh, thank you for the question. You are amazing. And I think that, um, as I said, it's a sign of, of, brave, of being brave and courageous. And I wish you the best on your journey. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for your question. Yes, and as I said in the chat, it's your passion and your work, your actions and heart that are going to shine through that. Are there any other questions? I just want to remind everybody that's on, you have four 
administrators from a TK through 12 system on right now? This is a great time to ask questions. I'm hoping, are you, are, is the panel willing, or is, are you all willing to talk about things outside of the conversation topic today? Oh, like if they have questions so. about, you know, as a new teacher, are, are, is that okay? Absolutely. Okay, because we've got four administrators here. These are the people who look at your resumes and interview you. on interview panels. All and the time. Every sort of position in the system. So, um, you know, this is a great time to ask a couple questions. And if you're looking for a job, don't forget to check EdJoin. EdJoin is where we all post all of our jobs. You and should I know that. That, you know, right now, um, if you're thinking about teaching, what should you do to prepare for, um, for an interview is really read what's going on with um, reading foundational skills. How are we going to um, eliminate that achievement gap and how are we going to mitigate learning loss because a lot of our students right now were zooming in during the pandemic and so their learning was um, let's just say it, they didn't excel as much as they usually do and then also what are the essential standards and so we have to really whittle it down to what does a student need to know for that grade level in order to go, move on to the next grade level so what are you going to do as a teacher to ensure that all students are achieving at high levels and receiving the support that they need to be successful after a year online where let's just picture k students learning in a 2D setting. So I think as teachers, just doing as much research and reading um, about mitigating learning loss, because they're gonna ask you that question. I can guarantee that. And then what is your passion? Is your passion reading instruction, math instruction? Really read about how the pandemic has affected any of those areas and speak to that. And when we read for our tribe, we read, we listen on Audible, we read again, and then we speak to it. So that's why a tribe is important for new teachers. If you're talking about these things, when you're in an inter interview, you can just talk the way you would to your tribe. And we have two raised hands, um, Jennifer Lopez and Christian Steves. Can I start? <laughs> Jennifer, yes. Um, for you ladies, you guys explained that you guys sit in panels and um, you guys, you know, see interviewees and stuff like that. What would you guys say that is like the first thing that brings you in from from someone that is interviewing? Like, like you just instantly say, okay, this person I want in my team. Ooh. Good question. I, I can I can speak to that. Uh, one of the things that um, I always look for in interviews is that you're authentic. Uh, it, it's very evident when you're speaking like things that you memorize from a book, but and then things that you've actually experienced or tried on, even if it's in like a case study or something, it's very different. Uh, also, if you speak to your passion, what you truly love to do, what you truly plan to achieve, if you're connected with what your purpose is and you're able to share that in an interview or express that in an interview, uh, it just shows that, um, that you are uh, an authentic person, that you're there for the right reasons. And, uh, and then you mentioned the word team. That's the other thing that if you share that you're willing, even if you don't know maybe a question in an, in an interview, but you're willing to ask clar clarifying questions or say, you know what, I think I've heard about that, but I'm not very clear um, that it would, it would be something I would like to learn more about. That uh, really, uh, for me, it, it would be a key, uh, a key point for, uh, for looking further into that person. In yes, and um, just to second what Jackie said, uh, just really you're making your why clear. <laughs> What is your why? Uh, because now with, with social media and so many different resources, um, the interview panels, they see trends in, in people who come in and interview. So really think about what makes you different than everybody else. And, and so really hone into what is your why? I would just like to add on to that too, that um, you know, right now it's a, it's a really unique time 
Um, when I became a teacher, there was a shortage of teachers, if you can believe that. And we were putting people on emergency credentials. It was just a different time. But now um, we, the last time I uh, posted an opening for an uh, elementary school teacher, I received 84 applicants. So I think your question is, how do I stand out, right? What do I do uh, to get an interview? And I have to tell you, um, proofread your letters and your resume. Um, have multiple people look at it because you know those little details, um, make sure you have current letters. When I'm looking at 84 applicants and I have somebody who you know doesn't have a letter with a live signature or their letters, um, you know, <laughs> super old or over a year old, really look for current letters. Um, and then when you're interviewing, um, just to piggyback on what my colleague said, you know, it's really important to show that you have a passion. So how do you show that? Will your actions speak louder than words? If I have a candidate that tells me, um, you know what, I volunteer at my local elementary school because I truly love working with children. That tells me this person's doing it not for the money, but because they truly love this, this field. They love what they're doing. So, you know, I have yet to meet a principal that will turn down a volunteer. I mean, obviously we're in COVID right now, but there are people who are taking volunteers virtually. I, we do it at our school. Um, I'm sure Ms. Marshall could tell you about the Read With Me program. Um, as a principal, I love people who think outside the box and truly have a passion for working with children. So yes, we are getting flooded with lots of potential candidates. Um, I, I'm probably gonna be on another panel this year again, and we're already talking about, are we gonna beat the 84 candidate record that we had last year? Because a lot of people um, are interested, um, but make sure you're doing things that really speak to your why. Why do you wanna be a teacher? prepare, practice answering that question, you know, practice answering questions, uh, do like a mock interview and um, speak from your heart. And okay, so I know Christian had his hand raised and then we have Shani who has her hand raised. Yeah, um, can I go first? <laughs> yeah, Jennifer was first and Christian actually just spoke. Oh, 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 I'm Christian, sorry, sorry, I got the Oh, it's all good. I apologize. Um. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Jennifer Lopez, uh, of course. I am I am a first generation here in California. My mother was from uh, Mexicali and uh, learned she, I was, I wasn't, you know, I'm more of an English speaker and I'm learning Spanish myself. And I, and I am close to uh, trans graduating Rio Hondo Community College, and I just got ac accepted to uh, Cal State Los Angeles for the Child Development Program. Congratulations. Thank you. And um, I've been wanting to be a, become a teacher since I was a kid. I, I, I love to help out others, and in the long run, I also wanted to become a, uh, a child psych. Thank you. Um, a child I want to be a child psychologist as well. But my question is, um, when it comes to say, to say if I have, like, but in the future when I become a, a teacher and I know that I, I have, um, I will have about, just say about four kids that aren't English speaking, speaking, and I know the majority of us is, uh, is a uh, Mexican American, uh, um, his, Hispanic, and I just want to know. Uh, um how can i how can i continue to uh to learn uh english sorry i mean uh, spanish sorry that was my niece um to uh you know to continue with that especially if i want to become a child psychologist later on in the long run after becoming a teacher you don't have to speak it's a mouthful spanish. okay <laughs> you don't have to speak spanish to serve english learners so what you would do is just build your practice around providing scaffolds and supports for your students. And the way you do that is by providing, like you're gonna do preschool, so word cards, you everywhere around the classroom, if it's a clock, you write clock. And then, and also honoring their home language and translanguaging. I'm actually an administrator at a dual language school 50-50. 
it should be an additive process where you honor that home language, that primary language, while building the second language, which is English. So you don't have to be bilingual. Of course, it's wonderful and it helps, but you do need to find effective ways to support your English learners. Um, in preschool, I wouldn't say sentence frames and different things, but vocabulary words. If they say it in Spanish, you say, that's a great way to say it. And you can also say it this way. And then if you wanna learn how to speak Spanish, well, uh, you can begin teaching your preschoolers English and Spanish, and you can begin that preschool level language and then move up. It doesn't all have to be done at the same time. You just, it's like eating an elephant, biting an elephant, right? You just, you bite it one small bite at a time, one step at a time in your growth and your process progress. So if you start as a preschool teacher, you learn and progress with your students. And how do you serve them through realia, through language, very rich and through music and culture. So if you're providing support for your English learners so that they can be successful and um, being proficient in the English language, then you can show that by what actions did you take. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I'm really glad to, to be part of this. And you guys seem really great. And and I, I thank you. And I saw the chat. Thank you, guys. I, it's been a long run, you know. Thank you. I, I, I really appreciate it. And knowing coming from, from you know, a, a mother who she speaks English really well, too, and learning from her. And I'm doing what I can. And I thank you guys so much. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little nervous. <laughs> uh, good luck in your journey. You're going to do great. Thank you. Is Shani next? Thank you so much. Shani. Chris, Christian, right? Then... Yes, um, I'm there. Um, I just uh, want to know like some suggestions on how to handle like uh, challenging situations with kids. Do you have a specific example? Is that um, like trying to get the kid maybe to sit down like at the table because they don't want to sit down. So it, it would kind of uh, depend on the circumstance. I guess my question would be why, why do you want the child to sit down? In some of my classes, I have all kinds of special needs students and we don't have them sit down at all. So, um, it, you know, it really depends. Like, you know, to so eat their lunch. Like to eat their lunch or to do their activities. Like, what would be some suggestions? Some suggestions. Yeah, it would really depend on the circumstance. I know uh, all of us have done a lot of work with PBIS, which is um, you positive. know positive yeah. modeling um, expectations of behavior, front loading the behavior. Um, we actually do like a, a behavior rodeo where we take the kids to the different parts of the school and show them what our expectations are. And then we um, praise them for it, encourage them for it. And um, really modeling is key, to, especially the younger the child. I know Diane, this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, because yeah, I'm working with like two to, two to three years old. So I'm like trying to come up with some suggestions to try to get them and to sit so down. To with, them. with that young of a child also practicing, Right, because we have to keep in mind that their sure. attention is limited. So, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want yeah. to have, the expectation would not be to have them sit for an hour, but maybe practice a preferred activity, um, you know, something that they would like to do for a short amount of time and then really encourage and praise them for that. I, I am, oh, yeah, I, I think that's great. I am the district PBIS coordinator, but I think um, first thing before we even have behavior expectations is building relationships. And then all behavior is communication. So when children are acting out, we kind of have to identify what are they unable to communicate that leads to that behavior. And um, Vivian was so smart in saying about the behavior, the rodeo, it's every single setting has to be explicitly taught just the way you te teach math and language arts, you teach them the behavior. So you go over the expectations prior to doing something. So if it's eating time to say, okay, kids, we're gonna eat lunch and we're going to, first we're going to put our lunch on our 
table and then we're gonna open it up and then we're gonna eat slowly and we're gonna throw our trash in the trash can and you model it. And then as you're going and kids are doing the, the, the right things, you're positively reinforcing the behavior that is expected in that setting. And I'm only speaking that way because we're talking about kindergartners or preschoolers, but thank you for throwing your trash away. That was wonderful. Can I see someone else doing that? So you praise the students who are doing the right behavior, especially like, let's just say they're next to someone who's struggling and just say, thank you so much for doing that properly. Can you help so-and-so do it? Never tie negativity to positive behavior interventions and always try to encourage them, support them, teach them, and remind them of what the expectations are, which if they're not raising their hands before speaking, just remind them, thank you so much for wanting to participate, Maria. Can you please raise your hand so you can show me that you're ready? That's the expectation in the classroom. Then she raises her hand, then you call on her. And so modeling, reteaching, and um, reviewing and every single area, whether it's the schoolyard, the cafeteria, the office, all has a set of behavior expectations that you have explicitly taught them and review and then positively reinforce with tickets or praise or prizes, but then eventually they do it on their own. Um, that's a whole different workshop in itself, but that's just a start. We have more hands up. You know what? <laughs> I'll be working, so I've been missing like a lot of workshops. Like I'm like, oh my god, I need to go to the workshop that I'm missing. <laughs> you'll be you'll be good. Just start with the ex basic expectations. Who said, uh, Juliana? I believe. Yeah, sorry, I was cleaning my glasses. Um, yeah, I had a question. I know you mentioned about volunteering. Like, how would you? How would one volunteer? Um, I'll tell you my personal experience. Um, I actually went to uh, the school that I attended, elementary school. And I walked into the office and I mustered up my courage and I said, uh, do you guys need help? <laughs> and, um, and that's like an easy way to do it. There are organized ways to volunteer. Like I mentioned, there's the uh, Read With Me program. Uh, we have a Santa Clarita Educational Foundation, and those are volunteers that come to classrooms to listen to children read, because there's a tremendous amount of research that shows that that's how you build fluency in reading. Um, and I know Ms. Marshall has a wealth of resources, uh, but there are some organized ones. And then you could just simply, if you know a teacher, uh, you could also, you know, I know thousands of teachers that would really love somebody to come in and just help for free. Um, so don't be afraid to ask, you know, build up the courage and, um, and ask. I'm sure people would definitely take you up on it. Yeah, cause like, when, like before quarantine, um, I would go to church and I would volunteer at church with the, with the kids in the classrooms. I would teach, like I would like read some stories about the Bible and all this stuff from, babies like from zero to teenagers but I did through all those years but I only focus on the little ones because like I liked working with them so I know a while back somebody told me that having a letter of rec from the people at church could help me as well uh that will help right it could um certainly if you want to volunteer at a school um I know in our district in Santa Clarita we ask for um like a tv clearance um, you know, those, those types of things, but, um, you know, just put your name out there and ask, um, certainly, um, remember also that the pandemic, although we're immersed in it is temporary, this will be over soon and things will go back to normal. So, you know, do the legwork now and get prepared so that when it does open up, our schools in Santa Clarita are all opened up now. Uh, we're just waiting for the, the, uh, red, the green light to allow us to have volunteers back on campus but we do have volunteers helping virtually. So, um, you know, just get your, this is a gift of time for you to get everything ready. So when it does open up, you're ready to go. Thank you so much. Sure. Vivian, we could also like as a region, I can explore um, online volunteering opportunities. And if I'm able to put some stuff together, cause we have a, 
we have a education community of practice that's a statewide group that actively makes resources and stuff when we see gaps due to the pandemic so we can get the word out probably pretty quickly about it and so i can see if we can make some sort of clearinghouse of like online volunteer opportunities for future teachers or something i could probably get it going in the next month or so if there's interest for that like juliana like if that's something that you want, we could try to do that in the region. I can't promise it's going to like fully happen, but I could, I mean, even if I could get two or three groups that have online opportunities, at least it would kind of have a door open until we can get back face to face like Vivian saying. We're right on the brink of that face to face, but it volunteer is like a gray area right now just for a little bit. And so our student teachers are back. We're starting to see some practicum and field work students at least planning to be back in fall. And so um, we can kind of do something in between if that could be of use. And we can also take um, at my site um, if they feel more comfortable reading in Spanish, where we could, we would love that because I'm dual immersion. So thanks, Renee. Um, okay, so Christian, then Stephanie, then Esmeralda, then Raquel. <laughs> Mine is pretty fast. Um, I just kind of wanted to know um, from the perspective of who would be interviewing, do you guys, do you guys go like on, because you know, everything is social media now. Do you guys go on social media and kind of like see who's interviewing? Do you guys like, no? Afterwards, prior to you getting hired, they do check your social media. So I, if you've never heard this before, make sure that your um, social media would represent a teacher for um, small children and what you're putting out there is age appropriate at all times. That's a representation of who you are. So prior to the hiring process, yes, that is checked. I know with me, I had to sign a, a release and they checked my social media. And so you just always have to, if you want to be an educator for young children, you always have to be mindful of what you post. Great question. Stephanie. Um, well, hi, my name is Stephanie. I am from Cerritos College and it's actually my first year um, in college. Um, well, this goes more into Jackie, like um, what was the most difficult, challenging thing that you had during your career and how, like what motivated you to continue with the career? It was, it was, everything was difficult. <laughs> you know what, at, at the beginning, uh, just kind of figuring out the road, like, what do I have to do to become a teacher? This is a second career for me. So what do I have to do to become a teacher? Figuring out what tests I had to take, preparing for the test. I had to study a lot. So if it was the CSET, getting the CSET books, I don't know if the CSET is still a thing, but I mean, really going deep because for me, more than learning the the content, it was a transfer that I've learned it in Spanish. Now I need to know the English words. Uh, so that was very difficult. Um, but more than anything, I think it was just what, what got me going was I knew it in my heart that this is what I wanted to do. I remember when I was a little girl and I organized my pencils and my pens and my little notepads and I told everyone what to do and what the lesson was for the day. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. So I was just so excited to do it that all of the challenges were one step at a time, one challenge at a time. And I still say that to myself right now. Okay, what is the next little thing I can do? Okay, I'm gonna do that. And then after that, what is the next thing? And before you know it, you've walked a thousand steps and you're exactly where you wanna be. And then new things come up and new challenges. And it's just, um, for me, I've always loved the learning and growing. So um, I just take deep breaths. And what's next? And what is a little bit next, little next thing I can do? But um, but yeah, that was what was very difficult, the figuring out the way for me. Yeah, and and for me, like I'm the first one for my my family, like the generation to go to graduate from high school and also to go into college. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I feel like I have the motivation, but sometimes I exaggerate and overwhelm myself with a lot of things. <laughs> you know so what, I think like we're, we're the same that way. I think we, we kind of do a lot of things because we just love learning so much. So just know yourself, what you're able to do. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, think, okay, what is something that I could just leave aside for a little bit? And what do I really need to focus on right now? Focus on that. And then you'll revisit those other things later. But yeah, it could, it can be overwhelming because we're, we're starting something new. And sometimes when you build something new, 
you do have that excitement, but then you're in the middle of it and you're like, oh, uh, what do I do and what is the next step? But um, just keep at it, mm -hmm. focus, and uh, you will be able to reach your goals. And congratulations for being the first in your family to attend college. Jackie, can I make a quick plug too? Yes. Um, that I want to just give a shout out because if you are a student at Cerritos College, Rio Hondo College, or El Camino College, even if you're taking one unit, we have a brand new program we're, we're partnering with called CPTP. There's an information session tomorrow. If you are a future teacher and you're at one of those three campuses taking a minimum of one unit, you're eligible to get a free mentorship program where we pair you with a mentor who's directly in your field of what you wanna become. And then after you work with them, you get a stipend at the end of each semester. So you get paid to go to professional development and to work directly with a mentor who wants to help you. So if you're at El Camino, Rio Hondo or Cerritos or considering that, this is a partnership for the next couple years, please go to the session tomorrow on CPTP. I'll put it in the um, chat, uh, getting a mentor is one of the best things you can do. I know Jackie and, and the team will agree on this. And if you can get paid to go through mentorship, it's like a dream. So I'll put that in there. If anybody can go tomorrow, please do. Um, actually, I'm, I'm oh, in a uh, meeting for tomorrow. Um, but we, can we answer questions? There's, there's a couple people who haven't had a, an opportunity that have had their hands up. I know a few of you have already asked a question. So can we just do the final two? which would be Esmeralda and Raquel. And that's the final two questions for tonight. Um, Esmeralda, what's your question? Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for this workshop. It's so empowering to see women of color and just Latinas out there. I wish my girls, my little girls were old enough to see the panel because you guys have empowered me. Now I can empower them. So thank you so much for this. And my question is, um, what obstacles did you guys encounter as women of color throughout your career? And how did you guys overcome those um, obstacles? Well, um, I'm gonna allow um, them to speak, but I will say that um, my own grandparents were immigrants from Mexico and um, my mom had me at 19. And so she wanted to be a teacher and just couldn't do it. Um, she went to college, but just couldn't finish the credentialing program because she couldn't afford it. I had a baby at 20 and I just made the decision that I wanted to get an education so I could be a role model for her. So I want you to think about it regardless of how long it takes. If it takes 10 years, 10 years from now, you're going to be 10 years older regardless. So will you be 10 years older with a degree and have your career of your dreams making an impact on families and children? Or will you be 10 years older sitting in the same place? So what you're doing is amazing. So I know sometimes it feels overwhelming, but the work that you're doing and your purpose is gonna get you um, the ability to serve others and make an impact. So I would say um, the thing that got in the way with me was just, um, I didn't necessarily have role models that were mentors. I'm also the first graduate of college in my family. So I had to lead that way. But since I've graduated, I have three children and they're all graduates of college and they all went straight to four year colleges, which my family never did. So um, my daughter graduated um, very young and so did my son. So I'm able to lead the way for my children and hopefully my grandchildren. So I just, I just think that with hard work, and motivation there really are no barriers if you just have perseverance and grit yep and i, I just to add to that i uh, was the first in my family as well and um, as far as obstacles i had to lead my own way and i always looked for people that were doing more than i was just like this group and so i always just followed and and, and found where i wanted to be and then i grew and 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 just observed and followed and um that that's what it's about you know find people who are going to challenge you inspire you empower you and keep you out of your comfort zone you need to take those risks and you can thank you guys so much that that was amazing thank you welcome, we have one last question right one last um, Hello, my name is Raquel. I would like to thank all of the presenters today. I'm going to keep it short and sweet because I know we're running late. Um, 
what professional and academic experience would I need to become a school administrator? Do I just need like a bachelor's degree or would I have to obtain a master's and then be a teacher for several years? Yes, so you need to, so you definitely need a master's degree. I know I just, uh, before I became an administrator, I, I earned my master's in educational leadership. Um, and every, uh, every um, job opportunity that I came across um, did state that you needed to be a classroom teacher for at least five years. Thank you so much. You Have are. a nice evening. Thank you, you too. And to add to that, just take on as many leadership roles as you can while you're a teacher. You get on your instructional leadership team, on your EL committee, your EL, you help with the, uh, the LPAC testing and providing supports and, you know, pitch in and take on leadership roles and uh, build relationships with administrators. And I love what Marley said, surround yourself with people um, who are where you want to be. So if you want to be an educator, go volunteer and be around educators and they're your best role models. Go to a school and ask who is the favorite teacher here? Go sit in their classroom and volunteer and you will get to see some amazing teaching. It's great when it's modeled in front of you and you can see it in action. So I would just say get around people you want to be like because a lot of times in Latina communities, depending on where you're raised, if, if you don't have role models who are educators, you need to be courageous and go surround yourself with them by volunteering. And also, um, like Vivian said, be of service. So we have lots of questions on the chat about how we landed our jobs, uh, PBIS. I think we have material for future workshops, <laughs> Mrs. Marshall. Um, hey, you need to hire us. <laughs> if you're willing. <laughs> I'm always looking for grant funds. So trust me, I'll get some money and then we, we can make it. We love paying it forward. This is our, we just love serving others. So every, any, everyone who's here, we are so happy to provide you with yeah. support. Definitely. And a lot of the questions have to do, how do I plan my path from being a teacher to becoming an administrator? So there's your title for the next workshop, yes. uh, because uh, it is an hour long conversation or more, and we would like to be prepared to answer all of your questions. But at this time, I think we're going to close just with our favorite quotes. And just because I'm talking, I'll share mine. When someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. And this can be interpreted many, many different ways. But I want you to think of when somebody shows you their talents, connect with that person and learn from them. And if, uh, if somebody's not really showing you something that can make you grow, then don't waste your time there, right? But definitely thinking of uh, students, get to know them, get to learn what their talents are, who they are truly, and, how, and that's gonna give you the information on how to best support them with your tribe, this as well, people that come in, uh, in contact with you and uh, you get to know them, uh, just uh, get just whatever your heart tells you, your gut tells you, that's, uh, that's, that's follow that. And, uh, and uh, that would be, that's a quote that I, I use all the time. And then somebody else, if somebody uh, did not, was not very kind to you, uh, don't stay there <laughs> and uh, move on, right? And, and find somebody that will help you grow. And we'll find all kinds of people in our path because that's what life is, right? A, a, an opportunity for learning. And um, thank you for your time today. Who else wants to share their quote? I'll share oh. mine. Okay, go ahead. Um, so mine is, uh, so there are no limitations to the mind except those we acknowledge. Um, and that's exactly it. We don't set limits because the opportunities are endless. And I would, I love that. And, you know, um, surround yourself with people who add value to your life, who challenge you to be greater than you were yesterday, who sprinkle magic into your existence, just like you do to theirs. Life isn't meant to be done alone. Neither is teaching and find your tribe and journey freely and loyally together. And, you know, when you have hard weeks, it's nice to be able to pick up the phone and call your tribe and just say, I need some inspiration. And they, they let you know who your worth is. Or when you interview for a job you don't get, and then they're like, 
those people are ridiculous. You're amazing. So, you know, you need women. Um, you know, I just want to put a plug into Miss Fish. She just got promoted from principal to being a director of curriculum and instruction. And we celebrated for her more than we would ourselves. Like when Merle became an assistant principal, we were just thrilled. We care about each other and we celebrate our victories. So don't like begrudge someone else's growth. Be happy for them because you know that will be you one day. So, yeah. And my favorite quote I just added to my slide, which was real success means creating a life of meaning through service that fulfills your reason for being here. So, you know, the fact that you attended this workshop speaks volumes of what's in your heart. And we just want to encourage you congratulate you and celebrate you. So we wish you much, much success in your journey. Congratulations. And uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you Thank for you your time. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. We need music, Mrs. Simon. Thank you guys. Bye. Have a Bye. great evening. Bye. Bye. Have a great evening. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Gracias, gracias. Feliz Mucho noche. gusto, gracias. Sigan adelante, sí se puede. Mm -hmm. I wanted to share with you guys something that was in the chat. I took a screenshot of it because Diane, I know it's going to just fill your heart. Am I, gonna, am I gonna do the ugly cry? <laughs> you might, you might do the ugly cry. I just texted it to you. Someone just, someone in the chat. Well, cause first of all, the chat was just going, going, going. Yes. And I didn't want you to miss this one. Cause this is a good one, Diane. They put, thank you for the workshop. If anyone would like to create a tribe, please feel free to contact me. And they put their email address. There you go, Diane. Diane, you did that. You did that. <laughs> we did that. Our tribe. We did that. We did that. Yeah. Thank you. Liz. That was great, guys. Yes. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Okay. We'll see each other at our next tribe meeting. Adios. Adios. Bye. 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 Bye.